Now, UK and US warships have repelled the latest or the largest attack yet by Yemen's Houthi rebels on shipping in the Red Sea, shooting down a barrage of drones and missiles. The Iran-backed Iran group launched at least 21 projectiles overnight, with HMS Diamond destroying seven of the Houthi drones. Defence Secretary Grant Shapps confirmed there were no injuries or damage reported. Tensions continue to rise over the attacks in one of the world's busiest shipping lanes with leaders concerned about the impact on supply chains and goods prices. Let's speak with Philip Ingram, former senior military intelligence officer. Uh, Philip, afternoon to you. A lot of people will be going, hang on, Houthi rebels, what does this mean? Who are they? What's the significance? Uh, in Janet and John style, if you can, Philip, just break this down for us. OK, simply the Houthi rebels are an Iranian-backed group that are fighting against the um, legitimate government in Yemen in a, a proxy war that's effectively between Saudi Arabia, who's backing the uh, Yemeni, uh, the Yemeni government, um, and Iran, who are backing the Houthis. Now, the Houthis have decided to um, have a bit of a stand against Israel's war against Hamas, um, even though they're, they are thousands of kilometres away and not geographically linked to Israel or to the Gaza Strip in any way, um, and have decided that what they want to do is attack Israel and attack international shipping using the Red Sea. Now, the Red Sea connects up to the Suez Canal. 15% of global trade goes through the Suez Canal, 12% of global oil, 10% of global liquefied natural gas. So it is a critical route um, for international shipping to use. The only alternative route is to go around the Cape of Good Hope around South Africa, which adds 10 to 14 days and thousands of miles, therefore millions of pounds to ships that have to take that transit and will affect the logistic planning for manufacturers and an awful lot more across the whole of the, the whole of the world. Yeah, indeed. And, and Gaza and everything plays a, a part in all of this with allegiances in, in different places. This could get a whole lot worse then before it gets better, Philip. It could do. Um, and the threat from the Houthis meant that there's an international coalition of 12 nations have put ships into the Red Sea to try and protect um, international freedom of navigation through the area. Um, and um, th those 12 nations, three of them have been intercepting um, Houthi uh, cruise missiles, anti-ship ballistic missiles and one-way attack drones. And that's the US, the UK and France have so far um, intercepted them uh, on different occasions. Um, and it shows just how well the international community works together. But uh, we've heard um, threats from you know, U US uh, officials, UK um, Secretary, uh, um, Minister of Defence and others saying to the Houthis beforehand, this is your final warning. At my count, they've had two or three final warnings so far. And I think the attack last night um, has to be the final, final warning. And what we're likely to see now are actions aimed at directly attacking where the Houthis are launching these missiles um, and the, uh, and boats from as well. They're, they're, they're attacking using boats. Um, in, into the Red Sea, uh, and we'll see some attacks against Houthi positions uh, actually inside Yemen. Yeah, and uh, you've hit the nail on the head there. I was going to say British warships don't fire off missiles uh, willy-nilly and for no good reason, so this really is uh, very serious stuff, and it, it doesn't happen exactly on a daily basis, right? Well, it, it's happening fairly close to a daily basis at the moment, um, and it, it's extremely serious stuff. Of course, it's all pushing to... Um, you indicate Iran trying to grow what's happening between Israel and Hamas into a much wider regional conflict. And that's why we're seeing alongside the Houthis attacking shipping and attacking into Israel. We're seeing Iranian backed rebels in Iraq and Syria attacking US interests. And we're seeing the Iranian backed Lebanese Hezbollah in southern Lebanon attacking into northern Israel. Um, and the Israelis are um, defending that robustly. So the whole region is a tinderbox at the moment. And that's why we've got so many Western military assets. And it's not just Western, it's Western and Middle Eastern military assets poised to try and deter Iran and deter the Houthis. But it, the deterrence isn't working. So the next stage has to be some form of uh, military action. Indeed. Philip, thank you for your time as ever. Philip Ingram with us here on Talk TV.